The advent of drones has introduced a significant challenge to modern combat. As we've seen throughout the war in Ukraine, a simple quadcopter ordered off the internet can be transformed into a deadly weapon with a few simple battlefield modifications. Part of the reason these are so effective is that they're not very easy to detect, and despite being quite small and fragile, they can actually be quite difficult to shoot down, even if you do manage to spot them in time. In response to this, the US Army has recently introduced the DM Shorad, their newest and best operational directed energy weapon, which utilizes as high-powered lasers to track and eliminate aerial threats. Today we're going to explore the details of this futuristic-sounding weapon and how many believe that its presence will single-handedly change the way that modern wars are fought. Legend has it that in the year 212 BC, the great mathematician and inventor Archimedes used an array of mirrors to focus the sun's heat onto an approaching Roman fleet, causing their ships to burst into flame and saving the day. A few Mythbusters episodes disagree, but whether or not you believe this actually happened, the fact that the story exists shows just how long mankind has been fascinated with the idea of a directed energy weapon, and our search only became more earnest in more recent times as we discovered the properties of electromagnetic radiation and how to create lasers. In fact, by the time of the Cold War, it seemed that this type of weapon might be the perfect way to defend against an incoming barrage of Soviet nuclear missiles, leading to Robert Reagan's proposal of the Strategic Defense Initiative, commonly nicknamed Star Wars, which envisioned orbiting satellites shooting down ICBMs with high-powered lasers. Of course, Reagan's laser-powered dreams never really got off the ground, doomed to suffer the same fate as every other attempt at a directed energy weapon. It seemed that they were just too weak, too cumbersome, or didn't have enough range, leading to almost every project getting shelved and funding quickly being reallocated to more promising programs. But technology has come a long way since the 1980s, and in 2019, the Army issued a request for a new laser-based weapon, DM Short which stands for Directed Energy Maneuver Short Range Air Defense. Now, at a basic level, the plan was for this new laser system to be mounted onto a vehicle and be able to provide protection from a variety of incoming threats. Immediately, Northrop Grumman and Raytheon Technologies entered the competition for the contract, and a shoot off demonstration was planned for 2021 to determine whose system would be chosen. However, only one of these companies actually made it to the finish line. Early in 2021, Northrop's model sustained irreparable damage, resulting from a fire that broke out in the system, essentially leaving Raytheon the winner by default if they could deliver on their product. And deliver they did. In mid-2021, Raytheon arrived with its laser system, ready for its first tests, which it passed with flying colors. It was able to consistently take down various aerial threats, such as small drones in simulated realistic scenarios while mounted on the back of an armored vehicle called a Striker. Hello, everybody. Have you ever found yourself caught with the age-old dilemma? Boxes too loose, briefs too tight, which to choose? Well, fret no more, because today's sponsor, Sheath, have absolutely got your back, or... Should I say, well, not your back, but your man parts? Because Sheath Underwear, today's sponsor. I'm currently wearing Sheath as we speak. I've also got a clean pair of Sheath in my hand right now. And this is an absolute game changer. No more discomfort, no more awkward adjustments, just comfort. Plus, as well as being extremely comfortable, they have a compartment system for all your different parts, which makes things separated. And I mean, it sounds weird at first, but just give it a try. Buy one pair of sheath underwear and you'll see what I mean. And then the next thing you know, your entire drawer is filled with sheath underwear. But if you're not feeling it, if you don't want that, like one day you sometimes, I don't, I, don't, I don't want that. Just wear them like regular underwear. They're still extremely comfortable. They've got stretchy fabric crafted with moisture wicking technology that not only keeps you cool, but ensures everything stays right where it should. With holiday season right around the corner, Sheath makes for a perfect gift. And guess what? They've got new seasonal designs, winter-ready base layers, and even a bamboo women's line. Head over to sheathunderwear.com and revolutionize your underwear game. Use the promo code MEGA for an exclusive 20% off your order. Treat yourself or surprise someone special. Don't forget to check out the video description for the link and that brilliant promo code. And now let's get back to today's episode. It really can't be overstated how incredible it is that they were able to whip up this technology so fast in the spirit of competition. After the first round of successful tests had concluded, the program manager for the weapon said, this has been an effort like no other. We are building and delivering a brand new capability. This is not a modification or an upgrade. It took just 24 months for the combined government and industry 
team to design, integrate, and have it ready to perform in an operational environment. The device runs on 50 kilowatts of power supplied by high capacity batteries that are charged by the Striker's diesel engine. Along with the beam director, Raytheon system also comes with a built in electro optical and infrared target tracking system, as well as a KU 720 radar. Some of the most advanced tech involved is the weapon's advertised ability to track entire swarms of drones simultaneously and engage them according to priority targeting. Unfortunately, other than that, not a lot of details have been made available to the public. Of course, it's understandable why, as this is new, sensitive technology that the United States doesn't want falling into the hands of its geopolitical rivals, since Russia and China have both been pursuing their own directed energy weapons. Now that we've covered its historically speedy development, let's get into how the army plans to actually use it. Modern air defense involves several layers of protection, with various systems designed to counter different sized targets at different altitudes. No single machine is designed to handle every possible threat, and the DM Shore Ed is no exception. In particular, it has been designed to counter threats on the smaller end. The first that we'll examine are drones. Like we said at the beginning of today's video, inexpensive small drones are becoming a seemingly unstoppable threat on the battlefield. In no place has this been seen better than in Ukraine, where on many occasions small quadcopters only costing a few hundred dollars are being equipped with anti-tank explosives or even simpler grenades to drop into an occupied trench. In total, only costing a maximum of a couple of thousand dollars, these makeshift bombers can disable vehicles and equipment costing hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. The reason they're so tough to shoot out of the sky, despite being so weak, is that modern air defenses are not really geared toward tracking and locking onto them. They're small, they're easily maneuverable, and their engines don't give off a lot of heat that larger aircraft do, making a traditional missile interception a difficult task. The DM Shorad is the perfect counter to this new threat. Once the threat has been identified, the drone can be struck almost instantaneously with a high-powered energy beam. Where exactly it is struck will depend on the target, but there are a lot of easily exploitable weak points when oh, working with such a weapon. Melting part of the propeller would send a quadcopter tumbling out of the sky, focusing on a fuel cell could ignite it, leading to the entire drone catching fire and losing power, or, if it's possible, the drone's cameras could be burned, severing its visual communication with its remote operator. If none of these, more critical options are available, burning a sizable hole in a wing could quickly put it out of commission. And the fact that the system is designed to handle swarms of drones means it won't be easily overwhelmed if several enter the field of view simultaneously. But while they're certainly a new and shocking aspect of modern combat, drones aren't the only threat soldiers face in today's wars. And likewise, they're not the only things that lasers are capable of intercepting. In a live fire exercise in May 2022, Raytheon successfully used their system to identify, track, and eliminate multiple 60mm mortar rounds mid-flight, presenting one of the first instances in hundreds of years that this type of munition has been consistently tracked and shot directly out of the sky from a weapon on the ground. This exercise took place at the US Army's White Sands Missile Test Range in New Mexico, which is where Raytheon also described their system as being able to engage rockets, artillery, and mortars. It's been speculated that the laser can destroy these targets either by directly igniting and detonating their payload, or in the case of a larger rocket, it can burn off its wings or control fins, souring its trajectory in an instant. Now, if this is true, it could be an absolute game changer. One can imagine several of these systems being positioned across a front line, creating a laser based shield in the sky over ground forces, keeping them safe from the indiscriminate horrors of mortar, artillery, and multiple rocket launch systems. Defensive positions would be exponentially stronger with these traditional threats eliminated. To make it an even more attractive option, the DM Shorad has been designed to be as easy to use as possible. Raytheon described their design process as soldier-centered throughout the weapon's development, constantly getting feedback from testing teams and adjusting the user experience accordingly. One of the most notable changes during this process was a complete overhaul of its controls, which were changed to reflect a common commercial gaming controller that the average soldier would find more familiar in his eye Hands. Although, truth be told, its effectiveness in combat is only one of the two reasons this weapon is quickly gaining attention as the future of air defense, the second is its cost. Now, money makes the world go round, and this is painfully clear in the US money, where the money coming from every bullet and rocket fired is taken into consideration before large-scale decisions can be made. 
It might seem like the US defense budget is unlimited, and sure, it is laughably large, even eclipsing most countries' entire GDP, but they're still careful to get the best bang for their buck when acquiring new hardware. And that's the other reason why laser-based weapons like the DM Shorad are getting more attention now, as they are quickly shaping up to be the cheapest option, and by a pretty large margin. Since the laser batteries are charged by the diesel engine of the vehicle is mounted on, the cost of firing the weapon simply comes down to how much fuel is burned during the weapon's operation. You can compare this to the cost of using missiles for interception, which can cost well over $100,000 each. The best example of this is Israel's Iron Dome, arguably the most sophisticated missile defense system in the world. Between October and early November of 2023, the Israeli Defense Force claimed that more than 9,000 rockets have been fired at their territory. Not all of these are able to be intercepted, but by late October, the Iron Dome had taken out nearly 1,500 from the sky, and with an estimated cost of $50,000 per interception, we're potentially looking at $75 million alone spent on taking out missiles. Obviously, this endeavor is well worth the cost, since they don't really have any other options, as the missiles they intercept are often the ones heading towards population centers, but it's still a hefty price tag. The other disadvantage here is the interception missiles are not so quick to be replaced, which is why they have to prioritize incoming threats based on trajectory. If a rocket's path seems to be heading towards the sea or towards an area with few people, operators of the Iron Dome will often have to ignore it entirely to save their ammunition for more important threats. And missiles aren't the only currently expensive option for air defense, depending on the target. Take, for instance, General Dynamics' Phalanx, which fires 20mm rounds at a rate of 4,500 rounds per minute to shred any incoming threats. At an estimated cost of $30 per bullet, firing this for just a few seconds exceeds several thousand dollars. Laser systems would revolutionize the cost-effectiveness of air defense, replacing these expensive missiles and heaps of bullets with a simple, effective, directed energy beam that can hit the target exactly where it hurts the most. And in the event it takes a little longer than normal to destroy the target, or if the laser misses, the DM Shored doesn't need to worry too much about running out of ammunition, as it can continuously fire as long as there is fuel to continue powering the generators providing the weapon with electricity. And lastly, there is no risk of collateral damage. Firing thousands of rounds from an autocannon will always come with a risk of these rounds unintentionally landing somewhere downrange, which is why the Phalanx rounds actually self-destruct after they travel a certain distance, reducing the risk, but further driving up the cost of shot. And intercepting missiles always comes with a slight chance that they'll miss their target entirely and instead strike the ground, which notably happens when a stray Ukrainian S-300 missile missed its incoming Russian target and accidentally came down on the territory of Poland, killing two people. Lasers remove all of this risk, ensuring that civilians and friendly units do not become unintentional casualties of air defense. Overall, the stage is set for Raytheon's system to pave the way for laser-based weapons to take the world by storm. The first delivery of four DM Shorad-equipped strikers has already been delivered to the US Army, now wielded by the 60th Air Defense Artillery Regiment, with more on the way and future modifications already in the planning phase. And as promising as this device seems, it's likely going to be but a stepping stone to even more efficient technology in the near future. There's other companies like Lockheed Martin and Raphael Advanced Defense Systems are already in the process of developing their own directed energy weapons. In fact, Israel is even working on a system called the Iron Beam, reportedly intended to replace the Iron Dome. It seems that the ambitious ideas for widespread laser defense in the 1980s were indeed on the right track. It was just going to take a few decades for the required technology to catch up. And, well, we're about to see it soar.